Hello, thank you for viewing our talk today. My name is Sheila DiLiberto and I'm a wildlife biologist at the National Wildlife Research Center in Fort Collins, Colorado. I'll be sharing data and results on an anthroquinone seed propellant seed treatment on corn for reducing feeding by wild pigs. These data were published in Crop Protection earlier this year. Wild pigs, also referred to as feral hogs, feral pigs, feral swine, invasive wild pigs or wild boars, are a widely distributed and destructive invasive species throughout parts of North America, Australia, South America, Africa, and many island nations. In particular, populations of wild pigs have been rapidly increasing and expanding throughout North America during the last five decades. Wild pigs cause extensive damage to ecological and agricultural resources. Ecological resources may be damaged directly through consumption of plant and animal biomass via various forms of competition for resources with native wildlife, including space, cover, and forage or food, as well as degradation of those ecosystems and communities inhabited by wild pigs. Negative impacts may also occur through indirect processes via disease and parasite transmission, reductions in water quality due to bacterial contamination, and or increased sedimentation and nutrient load, sediment loss, or propagation of other invasive species. The pictures on this slide going clockwise show examples of wild pig damage, including a wallow, often found in wet areas during warmer months, wild pigs depredating a bird nest, rooting damage on a national wildlife refuge, damage to a tree caused by wild pig rubbing, and wild pig damage to the shore of a marsh at a state park in Florida. Wild pig presence can also result in significant and direct financial loss to agricultural producers and landowners. Types of agricultural damage vary regionally and depend on crop type and wild pig densities. Damage occurs through direct consumption and trampling of various crops like corn, soybeans, peanuts, and sorghum as well as through the rooting of pastures and hay fields. Wild pigs reportedly cause more damage to corn than any other type of crop. In a survey of 11 states in the US during 2014, it was estimated that damage to corn resulted in a loss of $61.7 million. Wild pigs use corn as a food resource and as shelter. Damage occurs during two primary growth stages immediately following planting and also after the ears mature. But most damage occurs immediately after planting when wild pigs consume the freshly planted and germinated seeds of corn plants. The pictures on this slide going counterclockwise show wild pig damage to a recently planted cornfield, an aerial view of damage to a cornfield prior to harvest, a wild pig eating field corn prior to harvest, an aerial view of damage to a cornfield showing multiple areas of damage that producers may not be aware of until harvest. And finally, damage to a sorghum field near harvest. The most common method for reducing damage is lethal population control of wild pigs, which includes trapping, snaring, recreational hunting, professional sharpshooting, and aerial shooting. Other methods such as fencing may be useful in some limited circumstances. For example, excluding wild pigs from deer feeders or in small pastures or field situations. But to prevent wild pig damage or restrict movement, fencing is often both labor intensive and cost prohibitive. Few repellents have been tested for wild pigs. A small number of olfactory repellents utilizing predator odors or gustatory repellents utilizing bitter tasting agents are commercially available in Europe, but have proven ineffective. A pilot study using anthroquinone as a seed corn treatment showed promise for reducing consumption by wild pigs. A 0.64% or 6,400 milligram per kilogram concentration of anthroquinone on whole kernel corn presented on nylon sheets on the ground was effective at reducing consumption by 86.5% for three adult wild pigs. Anthroquinone is a chemical repellent that causes post-ingestional distress by irritating the gut and has been used as a repellent to protect crops primarily from birds since the 1940s. Repellency is concentration dependent and pest species must consume enough anthroquinone to induce a negative post-ingestive response, 
And therefore, the repellency is considered a learned behavior. The objectives of this study were to evaluate whether seed corn treated with an anthroquinone repellent reduced consumption by populations of free ranging wild pigs and to identify the most effective concentration of anthroquinone for repelling wild pigs from consuming the corn. A series of cafeteria style tests with free ranging wild pigs were conducted at study sites in Alabama and Texas. The first field trial was conducted in August 2019 in southern Alabama, where the average temperature was approximately 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 27.6 degrees Celsius and 4.8 inches of rain fell throughout the approximately two week study. The landscape in Alabama was char characterized as part of the southeastern plains ecoregion, a mosaic of croplands, pasture lands and woodland forests that are a mixture of oak, hickory and pine forest. In 2016, the estimated wild pig population density in Alabama was six to eight wild pigs per square kilometer. In 2014, an estimate of corn production value lost to wild pigs in Alabama was 0.93% of the crop, which equated to approximately $1.95 million uh, of damage. The second field trial was conducted in February and March of 2020 in North Central Texas. The temperature averaged 42 degrees Fahrenheit or 5.5 degrees Celsius and a half inch of rain fell throughout the study. The landscape in North Central Texas is characterized as part of the Southwestern Tablelands ecoregion, dominated by jun juniper, scrub oak, and midgrass savanna with interspersed croplands. In 2016, the estimated wild pig population density in Texas was three to five wild pigs per square kilometer. In 2014, an estimate of crop production value lost to wild pigs in Texas was 1.65% of the crop which equates to $23.8 million of damage. Each study began by pre baiting sites for five nights to locate wild pigs. We selected sites with fresh sign of wild pigs, including wallows, rooting, tracks, and feces. A total of 20 sites in Alabama and 30 sites in Texas were pre baited for five nights with approximately 11 kilograms of corn to locate wild pigs until eight sites with independent sounders of wild pigs were identified in each study area. We identified independent sounders of wild pigs in each area by recording sizes, colors, patterns, numbers, and sexes of wild pigs observed in camera images at each site and comparing these with the other sites. In Alabama, there was approximately 0.7 miles between sites while in Texas, there was approximately 1.6 miles between sites. On night six, we presented a cafeteria style preference test of approximately 11 kilograms of corn per treatment for six nights. The three treatments in Alabama were control or untreated, 0.5% or 5,000 milligrams per kilogram anthroquinone and 3% or 30,000 mil 30, milligrams per kilogram anthroquinone sprayed and dried on whole kernel corn. Based on results from Alabama, we increased the lower concentration treatment for evaluation in Texas to increase the repellency of that treatment. In Texas, the three treatments were control or untreated, 1.5% or 15,000 milligrams per kilogram anthroquinone, and 3% or 30,000 milligrams per kilogram anthroquinone, sprayed and dried on whole kernel corn. The cafeteria style test is a preference test and was designed so that wild pigs would encounter all three treatments. The treatments were spaced a minimum of 10 meters apart in wood or plastic troughs secured to the ground and remote cameras were placed five meters from each treatment. The field of view of each camera only captured the immediate proximity around a single treatment and the treatments were deployed in a triangular pattern with the cameras facing out from the center except for the bait site was along a linear feature of the landscape such as a fence line in which case the cameras and bait sites were linearly aligned. Any whole corn remaining the following day was removed from both inside and outside the trough and no attempt was made to exclude non-target animals. The remote cameras were set to record time-lapse images every three minutes, producing 20 images per hour or 480 images per day. This allowed us to create a visitation index, which was comparable across each treatment. 
for each image, the date, time, count of each species present, and count of each species consuming bait from the troughs was recorded. Species were considered to be consuming bait if the head was positioned over the trough or for birds if they were perched on or in the trough. All animals observed were identified to the species level with the exception of grouping all passerine birds into a single category and grouping mule deer and white-tailed deer into a single category. In Alabama, 67,644 images were collected and examined, and in Texas, 65,990 images were collected and examined. This figure shows the proportional amount of consumption recorded for each treatment in Alabama with the standard errors. The remaining corn on night four was wet from rain. The average of the maximum numbers of wild pigs observed in Alabama was 5.3 wild pigs. Overall average consumption was 0.4 kilograms of high treated corn, 3.5 kilograms of low treated corn, and 7.5 kilograms of untreated corn each night. Compared to untreated corn, high treated corn was consumed 95% less and low treatment corn was consumed 52.3% less. Total consumption did not differ across the nights of the study. This figure shows the proportional amount of consumption by wild pigs recorded for each treatment in Texas, along with the standard errors. The average of the maximum numbers of wild pigs observed in Texas was 8.3 wild pigs. Overall average consumption was 3.6 kilograms of high treated corn, 5.1 kilograms of low treated corn, and 8.8 .8 kilograms of untreated corn each night. Compared to untreated corn, high treated corn was consumed 59% less and low treatment corn was consumed 42% less. Total consumption also did not differ across nights in Texas. This next series of slides shows the numbers of animals feeding per hour recorded for wild pigs, raccoons, and deer, both white-tailed deer and mule deer for each treatment. These species represented 98.1% of the images with animals feeding in Alabama and 90.9% of the images of animals feeding in Texas. In Alabama, the rate of wild pigs feeding on high treated corn was lower during the latter nights of the study. The rate of feeding on high treated corn was lower than untreated corn, but there was no difference in the rate of wild pigs feeding on low and untreated corn. In Texas, the rate of feeding on high treated corn was lower than untreated corn, but there was no difference in the rate of wild pigs feeding on low and untreated corn. In Alabama, raccoons showed no difference in rates of feeding between high and low treated corn compared to untreated corn. Deer were rarely observed by the cameras, but nonetheless, deer fed on high and low treated corn at a lower rate than untreated corn. In Texas, the rates of feeding deer were greater on study. When averaging across nights, however, raccoons fed on the high treated corn at a lower rate than untreated corn. The rate that raccoons fed on the low treated corn and untreated corn were similar. The rates that deer, both white tailed deer and mule deer, fed on the high and low treated corn were lower than the untreated corn. So in conclusion, anthraquinone treated whole kernel corn reduced consumption of whole corn by wild pigs. The greatest repellency was observed at the highest concentrations or approximately 3% anthraquinone. In Alabama, actual residues of 30,400 milligrams per kilogram anthraquinone resulted in 95% repellency. In Texas, 32,300 milligrams per kilogram uh, residue anthraquinone resulted in 59% repellency. In Alabama, 5,000 milligrams per kilogram anthraquinone resulted in 52% repellency, while in Texas, actual residues of 14,900 milligrams per kilogram anthraquinone resulted in 42% repellency. Trends in repellency were also observed in the rate that wild pigs spent feeding on each of the treatments, with greater anthraquinone concentrations corresponding to lower rates of feeding by wild pigs. Anthraquinone repellency declined as larger groups of wild pigs fed on the treated corn. 
equating to a reduction in repellency as sounder size increased. Additionally, wild pigs are known to be intracompetitive while foraging, especially when resources are limited, which likely resulted in subdominant animals feeding more on the higher concentrations of anthropinone treated corn than untreated corn as more pigs were present. Raccoons did not appear to be repelled by any of the anthroquinone treatments and actually spent more time feeding on the highest treatment in Texas. Wild pigs visited bait sites most during dusk, whereas raccoons would visit most during night, and raccoons avoided the bait sites when wild pigs were present. So it's likely that raccoons were visiting the bait sites after wild pigs had visited and consumed the untreated corn, leaving only the anthroquinone treated corn for raccoons. More investigation without wild pigs present would be needed to confirm these results. Deer visits to the bait sites were rare, but followed the expected trend of declining visitation based on the increasing concentration of anthroquinone treatments. In summary, a 3% anthroquinone treatment on whole kernel corn showed promise for reducing consumption by wild pigs. Repellencies of 95% and 59% on treated corn were observed in Alabama and Texas. Repellency declined as larger groups of wild pigs fed on the treated corn. Next steps include testing of anthroquinone treated corn on seed corn that is planted in the ground and monitoring for potential protection from wild pigs. With that, I would like to extend a great thanks to the many people who helped make the study possible including those who provided property access, study logistics, and assisted with the extensive data collection. As I mentioned earlier in the talk, the data presented here were recently published in the journal Crop Protection, and I've listed the citation if anyone is interested to read more about this study. Thank you.